I'm now going to investigate the data that I got for my investigation, which is to investigate the relationship between gas pressure and temperature using this spreadsheet right here. So what I have here is a table where I'll put my raw results, pressure in PSI, temperature in degree C. I then perform a conversion into kilopascals and Kelvin. I've put noted here the conversion factors for the pressure. So one pound of force is 4.448 newtons, one inch is 0 0.0254 meters. So I'll be using that in this calculation here. Let me just show you that now. So I am multiplying the value in column A by 4.48, 4.448, sorry, dividing by a square inch, which is the square of 0 0.0254, this value here, and then dividing that by a thousand, that converts it to kilopascals for me. So that's what's happening in column C. And then in column D, where I'm converting the temperature into kelvins from degree C, I need to add 273 to that, so all those values are adding 273. So that, what I'll do first is put the data in here and you'll see those calculations performed automatically and then we'll move on to explaining what's happening here. So the first was that I have 14 PSI and that's 5 degrees C, 15 and 44, 16 and 58, 17 and 90 and then on this point if you remember I reached 99 degrees C and I wasn't going to reach the next pressure marking on the PSI scale. So I took a reading from the kilopascal scale directly. So at 99 degrees C, I was at 120 kilopascals. So what I'm gonna do here is just overwrite this formula. But since I'm not putting in a PSI value, just overwrite that formula with the number which is 120. Okay, so I now have my data inputted, pressure and temperature right here. Okay, so now onto this table here. So this is my test for whether the data is directly proportional, i.e. is the gas pressure directly proportional to the temperature. If you have variables that are directly proportional, then one variable divided by the other should give you a constant value for each set of data. What you can see I'm doing here is I'm dividing this pressure value by this temperature and then I repeat that calculation for each row of data. If I get the same value for all of the rows of data then there is a directly proportional relationship. Here you can see it's a bit ambiguous. They are very close together however there is a bit of a downward trend. Though we don't know if we carried out more values if we we're able to go to higher temperatures and higher pressures then perhaps we would have found some 0.34s or 0.33s here that would then show that this is staying roughly constant. We should be expecting them to find, we should be expecting to find that they are remaining constant because we know that pressure and temperature are directly proportional. So anyway, it's not a con very conclusive test, but probably they are directly proportional from this set of data you could kind of go that way. Um, we can definitely see though in the test for inverse proportionality that pressure and temperature are not inversely proportional. What this column is doing is multiplying the pressure and temperature. If two variables are inversely proportional, then their product will be constant. And we can clearly see that this is going up. So we know they are definitely not inversely proportional that strengthens the case for accepting that they are directly proportional. So yeah, you can see that that multiplication is repeated down here. So the other thing that we'd want to look at is a graph. We could look at two graphs. We could look at pressure versus temperature and pressure versus one over the temperature, the reciprocal. And we'd be looking to see which one gave us a straight line through the origin. Now, we're clearly not going to get a straight line through the origin for pressure versus the reciprocal of temperature because they're definitely not inversely proportional from here. But we'd be interested to see where pressure versus temperature takes us. I have a false origin on here, so it's hard to see 
uh, you can't see from here whether it's going to go through the origin, but we can use the trend line equation to see what we got. Now we got a straight line. One caveat to this is we've only got five data plots and it's quite a short range. We'd want to use a pressure vessel so that we could have a larger range of temperatures and pressures and probably go colder as well by cooling the, the water down further. So yeah, we, with that in mind, we can look at the equation and we can see that we do have a negative intercept. So it's not quite through the origin, <coughs> not, not terribly far off, but um, nonetheless, it's not going through the origin. So perhaps with a larger data set, we would be able to see that intercept decreasing and therefore we get closer to the origin, as in the magnitude of that intercept decreasing. So that's the experiment analysis, quite a short one because we're just looking to see what the relationship is between pressure and temperature.